Hey everybody, welcome to Speed Bump. It's time for Pyramid Magic. We got eight. This game seven players. rules. Uh, this game was released uh, via SegaNet originally, if I'm not mistaken, and um, it's a very fun puzzle platformer. I think it's not super long, but it's pretty cool. Um, I'm pretty excited to see how much all of these people hate me when we're done. 30 minutes on the clock. Counting yeah. down backwards. I'll, yeah, I'll go ahead and give him the start then. I'm ready. So this game does have a level skip mechanic. Uh, you can skip up to three levels across the run. Kind of a neat mechanic for a puzzle game. You know, if you're just completely stumped by one, you don't have to never make any progress. But... Um, I told them they're not allowed to use it. We'll assess a, a tiny penalty if they do. You know, add a few minutes to their clock or something. This is one of these games I, uh, I did play all three of these in a row. I was just alphabetically going through the libraries. Oh, you've played this? Yeah, nobody knows how many Pyramid Magics there's gonna be. It's one of those gong show <laughs> jokes. Where they're like, yes, finally, we gonged that thing, and then another one appears. Yeah, there's Pyramid Magic 1, 2, 3, and then Pyramid Magic Special. Yes. Um, I quite like this. I don't know what your opinion on it was when you played it or how chat felt about it, but I really like Pyramid Magic. It's like a very simple set of rules, um, but some of these puzzles are pretty devious, so... It's a perfectly serviceable puzzle game. This is a lost art. They don't make these kind of games anymore. You gotta go pure indie to get this. So Jasper Teen's the only one still stuck on the first level. This one's kind of tricky. Um, it's it's trying to teach you uh, a few specific mechanics, like how you open boxes is by jumping on them. Um, I did give them, there's, there's not a manual for this, so to speak, as far as I know. Um, there are controls in a menu in game, but it's all in Japanese. Uh, I did link them to a page that told them the control information that they'd be missing. Um, so they have it available to them. So I've, I've informed them once again that uh, the controls are available in the link that I provided. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I don't know why every game made before the year 2000 was required to have lives. <laughs> um, I, think, I think there was weird. some sort of government agency enforcing this, and uh, when that government agency finally dissolved, um, games were free to, to be better. Um, but unfortunately, this, like so many games of its era, do ha does have lives, and it is not the better for it. Yeah, there's a couple mean live-stealing kind of situations in this puzzle game. It is a puzzle game where you can soft walk and such. To have a live system in it is just kind of weird. I think that you're into just about any game that's Got a character dressed like this, being honest. <laughs> I see you play them all. When are you doing Splunky? You know, I keep saying that I need to and I never get around to it. Maybe uh, before the summer's out, we should, we should, we should book it. I'd love to, I'd love to play through it. You and, and several of my friends would love to watch it and probably tag along for bits of it, so. There's co-op mode, too. And versus. That's only in Splunky 2, though, right? It is in one sort of local. We could get around that. Uh, 2 has direct real online play, though, yeah. I don't like 2 as much, but it's okay. Splunky 2 uh, 
So Splunky one has local, but you'd have to do it through Parsec, right? There are mods that you could use, but you can gotcha. do it that way too. Uh, also on the agenda is Bubsy two, the game rating. <laughs> Look forward to yep. it. Wednesday. Apparently, apparently the people have been craving Bubsy two. You you idiots. Um, and uh, it sounds like it sounds like we're gonna do it this week. I'm gonna I'm gonna pop by the Smite stream, and we're gonna. We're gonna give it a real fair assessment. Watching Merlin miss by a pixel and their block gets crushed. Yeah, so this this game does like grid alignment. It'll it'll align everything to the grid. Uh, for blocks, it's on a half grid, um, so you can like offset the blocks. So it's not like it's not like you can get pixeled by it, but it's definitely still fiddly enough that it can be annoying. Aspertine's figuring out the mechanic here. So there's there's a few little mechanics. Uh, this game's fairly self-explanatory, but I think it does a good job of explaining some of the mechanics early on. Uh, the level that Jaspertine was on right there teaches you that the only way to crouch down, the only way to go through a small uh, hole is to be holding a block. Like holding a block hunches you over and that's the only way to achieve that. Round five is locking up most of the players. I think I know the solution. The problem is that the ceiling is too low. Uh, this joystick here is showing off. You cannot jump through there like that. Right. And then when you try, when you try to go down, one of the rude things this game does is kills you for it. I believe yeah, if you're holding a block on your back and you fall fall off of a ledge, uh, the block crushes you. I believe they need to stack further over. They're under the impression they need to make perfect steps, but they're actually just doing it one in incorrectly. I think. Yeah, Bubsy 2 is, uh... Bubsy 2 is my least favorite Bubsy. Do you do you have a greater Bubsy ranking? What's your what's your least favorite Bubsy? It's Bubsy two, I think. <laughs> uh, it's Bubsy two on the Game Boy, actually, followed by Bubsy two on the SNES. I never played Bubsy two on the Game Boy. It feels to me like it should be somehow more playable. Like the restriction feels like it had to have been a better game, but I can also see how it could just be like strictly worse. The Jaguar one's pretty bad. Uh, the SNES one, the first one's the best one, and I think that's pretty clear. Yeah, for sure. It shouldn't be, but it is. <laughs> they made a they made a DOS version of that one that sucks. The Genesis version's worse. Oh, I like that. I I played through Super Bubsy uh, last year. Um, it's yeah, it's not it's not better than Bubsy one, but. I don't think it's worse. Dude figured it out. Fantastic. Dude's making really great progress. Uh, he's assessed a penalty for um, using the level skip once. I just told him that we'd subtract one from his level count. Um, but... No, that's not. 
All right, am I allowed to get on my soapbox here? Is this a <laughs> is this a safe place for me to get on my soapbox? Yeah. Okay, so Bubsy 3D's camera is good, actually. Uh, you're you're entirely wrong about that. Bubsy 3D's camera is good, actually. They borrowed from another very good game, Jump and Flash, the idea that if you're going to be jumping in the air and the camera controls are a little bit strange, uh, then the nicest thing you can do is angle the camera down uh, so that you can actually see where you land, which is a thing that like a lot of 3D games get wrong, uh, is not realizing that if I'm jumping in the air in a platformer, the most important thing to me is where am I going to land next? Uh, and so Bubsy 3D actually gets that really, really right. Um, it's, its main crime is actually just being tank controls, but you can't really blame Bubsy 3D for tank controls because it was so early in the 3D era that no one had really done a very good job of working <laughs> out what the right way to do camera controls were. Like, I mean, who did they have to copy from? They had either Jump and Flash with tank controls or they had uh, Crash Bandicoot, which was like a game on rails so they didn't have to worry about the camera. I uh, think that that game, I don't like 3D platformers at all, but I think that game is still better than Bubsy 2. For boredom For factors, sure. stage design, just whatever. Bubsy 3D has a lot of flaws, but honestly, for the era that it was coming out in, I have a lot of respect for, like, how competent it is when they were working with no, no real, uh, roadmap. It looks like, uh, I don't know if Jasper Teen has yet, but everyone else got through round five, finally. I think, uh, you know, Jasper Teen's struggling with this level, but it's not all that surprising. This is a, a tricky level right here. It's kind of asking you to, to copy the pattern, right? Like, I think this game does do a really good job of tutorializing. So at the beginning of this level, it shows you, hey, if you offset the blocks, you can make stairs. And then now it gives you even more blocks to do the same thing with. So you kind of have to, you have to pick up that it's, it's indicating this pattern to you. What's in the chest? Uh, so the, the red key opens the red chest. The red chest gives you the green key. The green chest gives you the scroll that defeats the, the mummy who's guarding the exit. Oh, okay. And that pattern's in pretty much every every level, so it kind of it. I think I think it works really nicely because it kind of gives you a um, like smaller goals. Like your first goal is figure out how to open the red chest, then the green, then exit. Twistick <laughs> needs to figure out how to kick the block. People were talking in the uh, in the chat before the race started. A few people were familiar with Pyramid Magic, though I don't think any of them had actually completed it. Um, but they were talking about one of the complaints about some of the later games in the series is because this was like not a commercial release. It was or it wasn't like released as a, a boxed game. It was it was through SegaNet. Um, it didn't do a very good job of like assuming what you already knew. So the second game basically starts assuming that you've played the first game and that you're already very familiar with the puzzle mechanics. Um, and so it doesn't have any of the same tutorialization, it just like basically drops you right into the middle of a very challenging game. But it's been about half of the time. I'm stuck here way in the lead at level 11.
some of these uh some of these puzzles get really devious i remember some of the late game puzzles in pyramid magic one stumping me for a very long time i think i think over a series of two streams it took me like five hours to beat all the puzzles in this game um they are not trivial by any by any measure there is a Bubsy collection coming out, yeah. I don't know anything about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, it's uh it is limited run games, so um it, it's the only thing it's missing as far as I know is uh is uh the Jaguar game, Fractured Furry Tales, but that's just because their carbon engine doesn't support Jaguar, I guess. Oh no. Which I think is a real bummer. It's like the only game that I think uh, really need... Like, I don't think that... I don't personally, I don't personally believe there's a lot of value in a Bubsy collection because most of the games are pretty accessible. You can play them if you want to. Um, but I think the Jaguar game is difficult. Uh, like, it is somewhat inaccessible for people. And I think uh, that's the one I would really like to see. Yeah, it's kind of a weird one. And... Uh... It's an interesting one, it's different. Merlin's trying to figure this out as well. How do you get up there? Yeah, he's he's uh, destroying the blocks, not realizing what, what he really needs to do is build a walkway so that he can uh, just step onto that ledge because uh, he can't jump up with the block in hand, that won't work. So what he really needs to do is give himself a little walkway that he can walk through that ledge. So I did offer Jasper Teen a hint. Um, I gotta tell you, pretty... I'm, I'm impressed by Jasper Teen's resolve to say no thank you. Gotta get that chest open too. Can't build on it. Yeah, that's, that's one of the tricky things here, is that if all you needed to do is get over the wall, that's actually not too hard to make happen. You have a, enough stuff here that you could just get right over the wall if you are using the chest as one of the blocks, but... Honestly, I don't see how you could use the chest. Really. I feel like... Okay, so so now... Okay, this will get him the solution right here. He's He should he should have it at this point. Please don't kick that. <laughs> he's so close to having it. Um, I think he's got the idea. He's just... Not, not aware he has it figured out, I think, is, is the big thing going on here. I'm stuck around 13 cruising. You gonna play um, HD Splunky? Is that the one you're looking at? Just HD Splunky one? Yeah, I mean, if I were, if I'm gonna play through the Splunky games, I would definitely want to play through. Uh, yeah, I'd play HD Spelunky 1 first. I, I don't really care anything. I, I'm not personally too interested in, like, playing classic Spelunky. But, uh, I would play 1 before I played 2, even though I'm sure they can be played in any order. I'm sure, I'm sure I won't <laughs> be lost on the story or anything. Honestly don't remember the plot for the second game. It's, it's an obnoxious game. The problem is, is that when someone presents uh, an unpleasant, challenging uh, struggle in a video game, I, I typically find that very appealing, and so I feel like if I were going to play Spelunky 2, I would be drawn to trying to get 
what what is it like level 99 on cosmic ocean yeah i've never done that i made it to like 40 and i you know that's the same as beating it honestly <laughs> it's right it's more... like it's it's not fun and not interesting and for some reason that only makes it more compelling to me uh the speed run can get it done pretty fast but yeah it's not very it's not very interesting it's like a, a bad retro achievements challenge honestly in a lot of ways it's like can you just keep on doing the same thing for another hour? Because it, it doesn't, like, get harder or anything. Not, not really, not in any interesting way. I think you'll find plenty of challenge in just Splunky proper. Both of them. Oh, I'm sure I will, yeah. They have a they have a hard mode area that requires a whole bunch of perfection throughout the whole run, and it, it is definitely the kind of game that kills you in hilarious ways, so. The ridiculous challenges of Splunky 2 were kind of overkill? I don't I don't know. They're just not really necessary. Right. But yeah, I would agree that you don't really need to play Classic. <laughs> it's like if somebody wanted to play La Moana Classic over the HD levels of... Uh, you could, I guess. This dude doing the right thing here. I think this might be correct. I'm not sure. How do they get... I think I think I know what to do here. I don't, I don't think kicking it is correct. Now, I think they're on the right track. This, that, that was a mistake, I think. Might be wrong. How do you destroy this blocks? So you have to have the clearance to be able to break it, like from above. So kicking a block in there probably makes that impossible. I think you probably need to drop blocks down the tube so that you can grab the ones that are by the chests. I don't remember how far I got in these. It was it was during the 30 minute uh, funk show stuff when I was playing all of these. Merlin's done it. The dance of victory or death. Hard to tell. It's victory. <laughs> when Splunky 2 came out, I bought it. Uh, it came out on the PS4 first for some reason, and I bought it there. And I had like 800 people watching because I was good enough at it that I was on the front lines of checking out this new stuff and figuring out what the secrets are. And that was cool. Yeah, kind of one of those first on the scene sort of things. Yeah, I definitely was not first one into the... And I never did finish the, the 100 thing that you were talking about. <laughs> never finished it. But I got the rest. You have to have a block to duck. That's right, right? Like, you can't... Uh... Yeah, you have to have a block on your back in order to be able to go through a one tall tunnel. So Merlin's trouble is that. They can't do it now.
joysticks done it. Exciting to see people get through the level they've been working on. Yeah, some of these can really stump you for a while until you catch that like one little gotcha, the the thing that you're missing. Five minutes left. Gaspertine had less trouble with stage five than, uh, than four. And five is the one that held up everybody. I don't think there's that many rounds. I think it's something like 25 or 30. So Time Stalker is like a decent chunk of the way through the game. Yeah. They gotta figure out uh, a bit of a kicking mat. He's so good at kicking this guy. It changes things pretty dramatically. It seems to me that you have to do a lot of shifting around here though. You have to be careful of the way you climb down here too because you will die if you don't. That's one of the things that makes the life system in this feel so crummy is that you can just kind of get yourself into a nasty situation. It's like the only way to resolve it, the only way to, you know, modern puzzle games with their undo buttons and you can always reset the puzzle. <laughs> It just, it just feels dirty that the only way you can fix it is to die and and uh, spend a life. Well, there's two blocks over there. What good are they, though? Ah, oh, now you can't duck. Yeah, you needed to kick something through. feel like this is the move what's going on here yeah put that block down there i don't understand this extra one here uh, that one didn't get used and i think that that's the problem time sucker has that's what i'm currently watching area 16 what do you do with this extra cube did it have to get kicked across there or did it start in that hole i think i know what to do i think they've messed up they need to get rid of the chest first then they need to do a switcheroo and get it on the left side and kick it across. And then possibly get that other cube later. Some weird stuff. Uh, the, um, the newest Bubsy game, the Wooly Strike Back, is pretty lousy. I think I, uh, it's one of the only games I've ever funded. Oh, yeah. Wooly Strike Back and really, really soured me on the idea of more Bubsy games getting made. <laughs> I, I never did anything with, um, the, the Bit Trip Runner one that, that got made. Pause on Fire. Yeah, Bubsy was 20 bucks and uh, an hour long, so I refunded it. It's like the only time I've ever done that. I haven't played the runner. Didn't know that was... Didn't know that was new. Yep, they made a... a Bubsy game that's basically just a bit trip runner... knockoff? I, I don't know. Time Sucker's doing now is, uh, yeah, that's it. That's that's the move right there. That's what I was thinking. Okay, yeah, I see. You just gotta get that block. But now, gotta put that other one behind you, I guess, because you can't jump and kick right. 
Yeah, I think drop it behind you, then put the other one up on the ledge, and then kick it through. Now you got the block where you want it to be. All set. Area clear. Just in time. 18 lives also. <laughs> Just rocking it. Round 17. 15 seconds left. Yeah, that's the reason I didn't feel too bad. I was going to make a little uh, hack for this that didn't decrement lives, but I think for the most part, by the time you get any significant way through the game, you've got enough lives, so it's not a huge problem. Time is up. Jasper Team had the solution almost here. They're so close to done. Time is up. Race complete. I'm having them record their scores. Uh, Time Stalker made it to 16. Uh, Dude had 12 after the penalty. Um, in general, I think they all did really great. See you next week for Pyramid Magic 2, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and special. Where do you put special on the list? That comes after three. Oh, nice. So it's four. <laughs> it's commonly known as four. Yeah, uh, sure. I see. I mean, the title of the game's <laughs> Pyramid Magic Special. Gonna host Skybills. Have a good night, everybody. Take see it you easy. Later. Off the blues. later.